All right, everyone. Uh, in this uh, video, what we're going to do, just want to walk you through an in-class example uh, of our single sample t-test, uh, except this time we're going to use Stata instead of SPSS. Um, so here in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to go through uh, and walk through the initial screening. Um, and then the second video, what we're going to do is we're, we're going to walk through uh, the actual analyses of the single sample test uh, and work through some of the auxiliary statistics there. So uh, the handout that we're going to be working with um, is this one, uh, the single sample T test, uh, single sample T screening uh, with the single sample T test dot dat, sort of the stata file there. Um, so as we're walking through this video, you can have this out um, as a resource, uh, kind of walking us through these steps here. So uh, from class, uh, for this single sample test, this was the basic setup for the problem that we're working with here. So basically we're looking at uh, the inventory of interpersonal process uh, problems, uh, self-report measure intended to assess interpersonal difficulties, uh, what we have. Uh, is the range of the scale uh, and the mean score of IAP total in a normative sample of adults. So this is uh, based on 800 adults, 50% uh, female, 77% white non-Hispanic, uh, so wide range age a wide range of age and education uh, in this normative sample. And what we're interested in is whether or not um, individuals, university students, uh, who've been exposed to different types of prior trauma uh, are showing higher levels of uh, interpersonal difficulties relative to this normative sample. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use a single sample test to test uh, scores collected from this new population. Uh, this is going to be uh, undergraduates ex uh, exposed to significant trauma. Test them against uh, a mean score of 25 in normative adults. Okay, so uh, what we've got open here is uh, the data set. So here's our Stata file that's opened up. Uh, this is going to be where we're reading all our output. Uh, and then here you'll see we have uh, the actual data from this set popped up. And so if we, I'll close this down um, up here, if we just hit this button uh, in the Stata uh, menu, um, this will open up our data and let us go through and manipulate the sets, change things around in the actual spreadsheet. Uh, if we just want to look at it and not uh, be able to change anything, we could open up the just this view uh, button here. And this opens up, same window, lets me go through and take a look at things. I just can't delete or change anything here. Okay, um, But since we're going to be doing screening and we're going to be working with stuff, we'll open up, uh, hit that so we can go through and edit um, our spreadsheet here. Okay, so these are this is our data window. Uh, this is where we're going to run our commands. Uh, and although Stata does have uh, pull down menus that we can go through and use for all of this, uh, what we're going to be using is a syntax file. So uh, if we go through, again, it's this little uh, uh, do editor uh, uh, tab right there. If we click that, that's going to open up a syntax file for us uh, to get started with the do editor uh, uh, do file. And we can go through and type stuff in here. Um, I've actually got uh, one of these all set up already. So I'm just going to open this up and go to my single samples t-test example for this screening. Um, oh, no, save. Uh, and we'll go ahead and work through that. Okay. So we've got uh, our data set open. Here are actual values. Um, we see we've got uh, participant number, gender, age, ethnicity. Not really going to use any of this. We're just interested in our IIP total score uh, for here. So what we're going to do first is we're going to start by uh, looking at accuracy and plausibility of our scores. Okay. So if we go back to taking a look at our um, setup, we know that scores range from 0 to 128. So what we want to do is make sure that all of our scores are falling within those bounds before we jump into any analyses. So uh, here in Stata, in my do file, if I throw up anything in asterisks, uh, these are notes. So I'm telling myself, you're going to check accuracy and plausibility here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say sort by IAP tote. Now remember that uh, Stata is case sensitive, so we got to make sure that uh, all our uh, the cases for our data file or for our variables is 
all set up uh, appropriately. Um, if you're not sure about your typing, remember here, you can always go through and double click um, in this window. If I just double click the variable I'm interested in, it pops it in my command prompt and then I can just paste that into my do file if I wanted to. But uh, so anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to sort IP total and take a look at our scores. So I'm going to run this. And then if I go up and take a look at my data window, uh, we see that um, IEP total has been ordered by in ascending order. And this is nice because, again, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to determine whether or not all our values are in range and whether or not we have any missing data. So we go smallest to largest, and then it looks like we have a bunch of missing data here down at the bottom. Okay. Um, and so what I would do here, and somewhere sort of I'm marking this down, uh, noting that we've got uh, how many missing values here? Of our set of 405, we're missing, uh, we have 335. I can actually run this in Stata uh, if I wanted to do the, the math, say 405 minus 335. If I hit display 405 minus 335. Tells me 70. Okay, so we're missing 70 cases. Now we can't go through and use those data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down through and I'm just going to delete those with missing cases. So I'm going to highlight those and then I can just hit delete. It's going to ask me if I want to drop these 70 observations. I say yes. And somewhere uh, when I'm writing things down, I want to note that I had to delete uh, 70 different cases because of missing data. Okay, so I've got that jotted down somewhere. Um, uh, then, if I'm looking through, remember that my values range for this IAP total score from 0 to 128, right? Well, I've got a case here uh, that has a value of 999. Now, this could be a lot of things. 99 is a, is a reasonable value, so maybe this is just a missed key. Um, what I would want to go through is, is take a look at the hard copy of my forms and see if maybe this was just someone meant to have a 99, but then just entered an extra nine. Uh, but if I'm looking at this uh, set, I'm also seeing that we have some missing scores. And I know that I also use 999 as an indicator of, uh, of missing data, right? Um, but because for this example, this is all we have, 999 is not a reasonable value uh, for this uh, variable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this one too. But first, I'm going to note that this is uh, participant number 414 uh, is female. Um, and I'm going to go through and mark that down for recording later on so I can keep track of who's, uh, who's going where. Okay. Uh, so I can go through and just delete this as well. Do you want to drop this observation? Yep. Okay. So I'm left with 334. Okay. So what I could do, I could also go through in my do file. I could write a note for myself dropped. 70, whoops, due to missing data. You say you removed one score given an implausible volume. So I could do that too. And this is just a nice place in your do file to keep track of, of where things are happening. Okay, so now one thing uh, before we jump into actually uh, moving forward with the screening uh, that I would note is that so we've gone through and just manually deleted things from the spreadsheet here. Uh, this is fine. We can do that. Uh, but one limitation of that is then we don't have a record of, sort of actually what uh, uh, what variables or what cases were removed. So if I go through um, and so here's my data file. Okay, uh, and I've made some changes to it, but I don't want to keep those changes. Um, if I hit, if I type in into my command prompt, if I hit, type in clear, what this is going to do is it's just going to get rid of my data. Then I can go back up to uh, where I actually pulled that file in, or whoops, uh, use, and this is where I had initially opened this up. I can just hit that again, and now it's going to pop back my data set there. I could also go through 
and hit control open to open this up and then pull things out. But uh, the nice thing here is all your commands uh, that you've run are being held here uh, in this column here in, in Stata. So I can just go back up and pull that. Uh, so again, if we go through and we go through and we run sort, right? So this is going to go down through and sort IIP total again like we had done before. But maybe I want to keep a record of sort of where, what variables I had gotten rid of. Uh, one thing I could do is I could go to my do file and tell Stata to drop um, I think if IP tote is greater than um, or equal to 999. Okay. Now what this is going to do uh, is it's going to tell Stata to go through and drop cases if there's an IAP total score greater than or equal to 999. So this is obviously going to get this case, but uh, the way tr Stata treats missing values, uh, Stata treats these missing values as if they're infinitely large. So if I tell uh, the program to drop uh, cases if IAP total is greater than or equal to 999, it should go through and get rid of those for me. So fingers crossed. Let's see if we go through and run that command. Yep, there we go. So all of those cases are now dropped. Um, uh, Stata just went through and got rid of them for me. Now the nice thing about this uh, is it's quick and easy to go through and uh, manipulate things within the spreadsheet, uh, but this is actually going to give me a record of what I've actually gone through and done. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I've gone through and modified this set, and I probably should have done this before I started, but I'm going to go through and I'm going to hit File, Save As, and let's call it Independent Samples T. We'll call it a working file. Okay, so again, always remember uh, to not use original copies of your data. Always save an extra copy or a working file as you're going through and making changes. That way, if you screw something up, you can always go back. Okay, so uh, we've noted that we have 70 cases with missing data, one score with implausible value, um, and we've gone through and got rid of those. Okay. Uh, so everything at this point should be good. What we want to do now is go through and take a look at our univariate distributions. Now there's a number of different ways we can go through and do this. Um, if we go through and we take a look at your handout, when we're looking at skewing kurtosis, we can use just a sum uh, command specifying that we want more details. Um, that's nice. We'll use that in a different video. Uh, but for here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say request tab stat, tabulated statistics for IAP total. Uh, and then here is just, I'm just telling uh, state of which uh, statistics I want. So I want sample size, the mean, the standard deviation, minimum, maximum, skew and kurtosis. Okay. So I go through and I run this. This is giving me information I requested for my full set of 334 individuals. Okay. So it looks like here, here's my mean, my standard deviation. I'm screening, so I'm not too worried about that right yet. Uh, but here I'm going to key on the minimum and the maximum. So my minimum is zero. My maximum is 999, or excuse me, 99. Um, and so values of zero to 99 do fall within uh, expected scores here. So I can verify that that my data are plausible. Uh, then also I'm going to go through and I'm taking a look at my skew microtosis. Now remember when we're sort of general rough rule of thumb is skew and kurtosis values less than two is what we're hoping for is something that might indicate non-problematic uh, violations, although we have to take a lot of context in that. So our skew looks like very, very slight skew here. Um, but then remember that uh, Stata uh, uses values of kurtosis uh, where a three indicates no kurtosis. So uh, the kurtosis value of 2.38 here um, actually indicates negative kurtosis. We want to go through uh, and get the actual uh, value that would be analogous to what might be displayed in like SPSS. I can hit display 
and this is just a nice in uh, unit calculator I can hit display the kurtosis value minus three hit that and so I've got a, a skew value here of say 0.19 kurtosis negative uh, 0.62 so again doing a okay in terms of distribution so nothing too concerning there okay so what I might want to do now uh, looks like based on our indices of skew and kurtosis that things are looking okay but I still want to graph this I want to take a look at my data data and see what's going on now here again we can go through and go graphics sort of pull up histogram uh, within uh, my pull down file I can say I want IP total. I can go through and say I want frequencies. I can change bar properties, submit that. Um, so this is stuff that uh, I can do through the pull down menu. There we go. Okay. Um, but there are a lot of options, and it's actually going to be quicker once you get a good uh, uh, syntax file put together. Um, actually, just do this uh, straight through your uh, do file here. And so what we've got. Is I've requested a two-way graph that means we're just superimposing some different graphs on top of one another so I'm requesting a histogram uh, for IIP tote and then I'm requesting 20 different bins here now uh, how I got 20 different bins depending on how you bin things it's going to change the shape and the look of your graph but what I have started to do is set my number of bins to 2 plus the square root of your sample size so again sample size here is 334 so if I hit display square root of 334 is about 18, so 1920. So 20 bins or 20 uh, different bars here uh, for my histogram. And then what I've uh, requested is a kernel density plot for IAP total. This is just a smooth line that sort of gets at um, uh, what your distribution is looking like. We're not getting these in SPSS, but we'll request them here in Stata. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're name, gonna, going to name our graph H1 and replace. This just helps us to save it and to be able to bring up multiple graphs at the same time. Okay, So we're going to go through. We're going to run this. And so here's the distribution that we get. So again, uh, because I've requested 20 bins, it's put things into 20 bins here. Uh, and then this is my kernel density plot kind of overlays this here. Uh, we're seeing maybe some slight skew, right? Not a whole lot, uh, but some things going on here at the end of the tail. Uh, again, we had found our uh, negative kurtosis value, again, 0.62. Uh, we're seeing that this distribution is kind of has some wide shoulders, a little bit boxy. That's probably where some of that negative uh, kurtosis is coming into play. Uh, but at the end of the day, all values falling within the continuous range of the distribution, uh, seeing a, a larger tail here at the high end. Uh, but other than that, not too much to be concerned about here. Okay, so this is our histogram. We can also uh, request a box plot. So if we graph box, this is a box and whisker plot of IIP total. Here we're just including some different uh, uh, specifications for your marker size and labeling uh, values that fall uh, outside one and a half times the inner quartile range. Uh, again, we could get this through uh, our pull down menu here. Um, but and some different things we can do but we'll just run this through the do file <clears throat> so I go through and I run this okay so here's my box and whisker plot uh, looks like we have a median just above 40 um, here's gonna be our maximum value our minimum value uh, this is the third quartile the first quartile this being the interquartile range um, but once again between my box plot and my histogram here, neither one of these looking like we've got too much going on, at least to be concerned about uh, as far as basic uh, assumptions. Um, and so based on these data, uh, basic distribution is looking like it's going to be pretty good with things. Okay. So the last thing we're going to do is look for any extreme values. Now we 
already have looked at things, we know that, uh, again, uh, nothing fell beyond one and a half times the inner quartile range in the box plot. Uh, everything in the histogram was looking like it was a continuous distribution. So not anything that we're probably expecting to be problematic, but we're going to go through and take a look anyway and calculate Z scores. Now, you'll see under extreme score or uh, extreme values here, I've got a command called Z score. Now, Z score isn't uh, a command that's loaded up uh, with the uh, package of Stata that uh, you just get from the um, from Stata Core. Um, but uh, the nice thing about Stata is there are user specified or user developed packages that you can download. Z score is one of those. Okay, so if you were to run this command without first downloading the z-score package you would come up with an error it wouldn't recognize that but easy enough I can go down to uh, my command prompt and if I hit uh, I think find it and then z-score okay and search what uh, Stata will do is search uh, the internet for z-score anything commands in this area and if we scroll, scroll down here you'll see web resources from Stata and other users two packages found uh, here's the one that we're looking for z-score um, creates a new variable containing standard z-scores gives uh, uh, who the program was developed by uh, if I go through and I click here this takes me to uh, the title description uh, installation files all I would need to do is click here to install and if I do that what it's going to do is it's going to download this package into on, onto my computer so that I can run this now I've already installed it so I'm not going to do it uh, but you can also see here's the help file if you get the help file uh, here it goes through gives you all the information about the package what it does different options available to it uh, examples uh, that you can run so again, this is a really, really slick uh, aspect of this component, uh, or excuse me, of this program uh, that allows us to go through and do stuff. So after you go through, uh, type it, find it, Z-score, download the package, um, what we can do then is uh, in our do file, we can just run this. And if I run this command, everything's looking good. Um, and we see now that what I've done is I've created standardized scores, Z-scores for everybody in the set. Okay, um, and so this is what I'm going to go through and look at to determine whether or not I have values, uh, extreme values that are falling far beyond the mean. And so if I run, uh, okay, so this is sum, this just means summarize uh, the Z score for IAP total. And the sum command just gives us a uh, basic mean standard deviation, min, max. And so here I see that my lowest Z score is about two standard my lowest uh, case on IAP total is just about two standard deviations below the mean uh, my max is about three standard deviations above the mean so that's getting pretty extreme but again if we're thinking about uh, our fairly large sample here here we have 334 individuals in this sample we would expect some people to have uh, relatively high relatively low uh, scores so within the context of having um, Z scores uh, at a min and a max uh, all below three uh, with this many observations again if I go back through and I uh, take a look at my histogram we're seeing so this is my min this is my uh, this is my minimum Z score this would be my cases corresponding minimum Z scores maximum Z scores again overall at least for this set not something that I'm too worried about here okay so uh, this has taken us through a basic screening for independent samples t-tests independent or excuse me single sample t-test single sample t-test our concerns are that our data are our outcome variable is continuous and we can treat IAP total as continuous score uh, we want to make sure that our observations are independent of one another this is a methodological issue um, but uh, we know or I know for these data that uh, people were scoring uh, their uh, survey independently uh, we want to make sure that the distribution of sample means for our outcome variable is normal right now remember that this isn't uh, doesn't involve the actual observed distribution right it's talking about the distribution of sample means so 
would the distribution of sample means for all possible samples of 334 uh, turn out to be normal in these data? Absolutely. Uh, underlying values are normal, uh, relatively normal. Uh, the sample size is extremely large for this, and so we have no concerns with the distribution of sample means. Uh, it doesn't look like we have any severe uh, concerns with outliers. And so what we would do is we could write all this up uh, using the framework uh, presented here in class. Again, here's our single sample t-test, uh, noting missing values, uh, accuracy, plausibility, uh, noting that uh, we removed uh, cases with missing values and plausible uh, scores, gotten rid of those, leaving us with 334 individuals in the set. Looking at skew and kurtosis, uh, looking at our histograms, looking at our box plots, uh, looking for univariate outliers here, and then going through and looking at uh, summary recommendations for the screening. So again, we note substantial missingness in over 17% of cases. If I don't know why I'm missing this many cases, this is a big deal. We want to make sure we can figure that out. Uh, we have an invalid score for case number 414, right? Um, recommend checking co uh, hard copy of questionnaires or sort of original data for there, figure out what's going on with that. Uh, but little evidence of outliers or problematic violations of normality. Here our big uh, missingness is our biggest issue. Uh, Want to go through and make uh, sure that we have that accounted for, but overall recommend proceeding with our uh, analysis as planned. Okay, so uh, this covers our screening for our single sample t-test uh, in Stata. Uh, what we'll do in the next video is actually run through uh, the actual independent samples t-test for uh, this example. Okay.